Today is Friday the 9th of September 2022 and yesterday Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth II, my Queen, died aged 96. For many Britons this is an immense loss and there will be 10 days of mourning in my home country as we remember her life. Let me say from the start, I, I am no royalist. I would not be upset if the death of Queen Elizabeth II marks the end of the British monarchy. But I am British. The Queen has been a constant for my entire life, my parents' entire life, and the entire life of everyone in my country born in the last 70 years. It's a long time, and she is a symbol for the country I was born and raised in, and that's why this is a poignant moment for many. However, I haven't called the UK home for five years. And this Moscow is where I have spent the vast majority of that time. And here there is also a link to Her Majesty. Actually behind me you can see the British Embassy with its flag flying at half mast. And also just down here outside the entrance there are lots of flowers put by well-wishers wanting to wish the best to the British people and also in memory of Queen Elizabeth. In October 1994, the month I was born, Queen Elizabeth II made a trip to Moscow on the invitation of Russian President Boris Yeltsin. It was three years after the fall of the Soviet Union and it was during a time of great strain for the British monarch, especially in regards to the recent breakup of Charles and Diana and discussions about the future of the monarchy. On October 17th, 1994, the Queen and Prince Philip were taken to the Kremlin, which is right behind me here, where they were granted an audience with Yeltsin and his wife, Naina. It was the first trip of a British monarch to Russia since Nicholas II and his family were killed by the Bolsheviks eight decades before. As a side note, there was some discussion about which pieces of jewellery the Queen would take to Moscow, seeing as most of the most impressive pieces of her collection actually came from Imperial Russia. However, Elizabeth II left those at home, opting to take other pieces from her collection. She also brought her own Rolls Royce, which was shipped here from London. In the next few days, she visited the Bolshoi Theatre, which you can see behind me, where she saw a performance of Giselle alongside Yeltsin and Yeltsin's wife. As part of her trip, she also walked across Red Square. She met the Patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church and she met Moscow Mayor Yuri Luzhkov. Yeltsin also held a state dinner for the Queen inside the Kremlin. One permanent sign of the Queen's trip to Moscow is this, a plaque on the old English court here in the centre of the city, a stone's throw away from the Kremlin. This was the first Western embassy in Russia set up during the time of Ivan the Terrible and Elizabeth I, her namesake. The plaque reads, This commemorative plaque was unveiled by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II on 18th of October 1994 on the occasion of her visit to the old English embassy property of the English Muscovy Company and residents of the first English emissaries during the reigns of Ivan IV and Elizabeth I. The Queen left Russia via St. Petersburg aboard the Royal Yacht Britannia on which she hosted her own departure banquet. She left Russia on October 20th 1994 via Finland. Since then, many, many other members of the British royal family have visited Moscow, including Princess Anne, very, very regular visitor Prince Michael, and the now King Charles III as the Prince of Wales in 2003. His trip actually resulted in a return invitation to President Vladimir Putin, who visited Britain later that year. And this behind me now is St Andrew's Church. It's the Church of England church here in the centre of Moscow. And tonight, well, this evening at 6pm, there will be a service in remembrance of Queen Elizabeth.